We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us here today and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept, accept this gathering and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to act upon all of the uh, very beneficial advices that have been given uh, from the masjid today. Um, today my talk is going to be focusing on the other perspective which is the perspective from the young person dutifulness towards the parents. How do we become dutiful and caring to our, towards our parents? And what are the advices that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in this regard? And in this, um, to begin this talk, I recited some ayat of the Quran. And the best place to get any advice, whether you're young, whether you're old, whichever place or time that you are in in your life, the best advice is the advice that we find in the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that's why I wanted to quickly share with you a translation of the ayat which I have recited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the meaning of which is, And your Lord has decreed that you worship not except him, and to parents good treatment, whether one of them or both of them reach old age whilst with you, Say not to them so much as uff, and do not repel them, but speak to them a noble word. And lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy, and say, My Lord, have mercy upon them, as they brought me up when I was small. Your Lord is most knowing of what is within yourselves. If you should be righteous in intention, then indeed he is ever to the often returning to him forgiven. Beautiful advices. And if we were to act upon all of these advices, we will live a beautiful life in our lives, in our own personal lives, in our family lives, in our community and in our society. And you see, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is comprehensive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us guidance which covers all of the aspects of your life. All of the aspects. And in the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you'll find all of these advices. Whether it be how you should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how you as an individual, how you, should, how you can succeed in this life and the hereafter, how you can have a successful family life, how we as communities can thrive, and how we as societies and humanity as, at large can thrive. All of this is in the compre comprehensive guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah. And part of this guidance is how you interact with other people. The type of mercy, kindness, best of character, especially to our families and our parents. And it is the aim of Islam, one of the aims of Islam is to build communities and societies based on this special bond that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created within the family. The bonding that you have with your parents, the bonding that you have with your siblings, Islam encourages you to join all of these bonds together and for these bonds to thrive. But rather, shaitan, what shaitan wants to do is to break these bonds. Shaitan comes to break the bond between the parent and the child. Shaitan comes to break the bond between the neighbors. Shaitan comes to cut the bonds between family. And we live in a time where even myself, when I was young, not too long ago, I'm still young now. It's not very cool for you to talk highly of your parents. It's not something that is encouraged. Rather, it's cool for, you, for a young person to criticize your parents, for you to be looking forward to the time where you can become independent of your parents. You can move out and then you can go to university in a far place and then finally you get your freedom. Sometimes as young people, when we go, when, when I remember when we, we go to school and college, it's a normal thing for people to make fun of their parents. Islam comes to teach us the other way of living. One of respect, one of duty. And in the ayat that we've just recited, inshallah, for the next 20 minutes or so, I wanted to spend some time, inshallah, uh, deriving some lessons for us uh, young people, especially uh, for us to uh, practice these lessons and see how we can, inshallah, enrich our lives, especially our family homes, uh, with these lessons, inshallah. Number one, lesson number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in these ayat of the Qur'an 
First of all, he mentions what is our main duty. Our main duty is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That is our absolute main duty. And from that duty is born all of the other duties that we have. So it's not possible for someone, for a young person, or any person of any age, to say that they are a very good worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at this, in the same vein, their character and the way they conduct themselves with their parents is in a, you know, in a very, da they have a very damage, dam damaging approach to the way that they speak to their parents. It's not possible for the two to be together. Because when we worship Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands us to be dutiful to our parents. So one cannot be, mashallah, someone who, um, who is someone who dresses in the sunnah way, comes to the masjid, and speaks with the you know, ayat of the Qur'an and the hadith. But then when you go back home, you have only bad words and evil words for your parents. We cannot have both together. When you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically Allah wants you to think about your duties towards your parents. And that is why he mentioned subhanahu wa ta'ala that وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا You worship Allah alone and you, then what do you think about being dutiful to your parents? Subhanallah. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are grateful to him. One of the reasons we worship Allah is he created us. And we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every single thing that we have. And as an expression of that gratitude, what, what do we do? We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose your means of ex existence, how? That Allah gave you parents. And you came into the world through your parents. So when we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must also be grateful to our parents. When we were born, and uh, myself, I can, I, can, I can tell you that when you are born as a newborn baby, subhanAllah, how weak you are. Every single one of us. Only a few years ago. Not hundreds of years ago, only a couple of years ago. You were a small little baby. If you were neglected by your parents and just left outside, as soon as you were born and were not wrapped in nice warm clothes, you will freeze to death. This is how destitute and absolutely vulnerable you were. In that moment, what did your parents do? They made sure that you had warm clothes, wrapped you up straight away. And then what happened when you were young? You didn't know how to eat or drink. So then what did your mother do? Your mother, your mother gave you the milk and then you started to get strong. But then it doesn't end there. Subhanallah. When you start drinking the milk, what happens? All of the milk will come out unless you do what? Burp. So then for another half an hour, mother is spending time burping you. Subhanallah. And then you go to sleep. You don't understand that you sleep during the day. Uh, you don't understand that we sleep during the night and you wake up during the day. You don't understand this timetable. So what do you do? Every three, four hours you get hungry and you wake your mother up. For those of you who become, who've become a parent, you understand the struggle. And so forth. And then when you fall unwell, what happens? There is no sleep for both mother and father for many days, non-stop. All of this and much more, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be grateful to our parents. If your parents did nothing for you, except that your mother carried you for nine months, and that when you were a baby, they looked after you, and today you are a strong young man and young, young woman, because of that, that is enough for you to spend the, your, the rest of your life being grateful for this ni'mah that your parents have given you. So that's lesson, lesson number one. Being dutiful to your parents and being kind to your parents is an extension to your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's very important. You put it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to give that level of importance to your duty towards your parents. Number two, many of the commentators on the um, ayah, the, 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 these ayat of the Quran, mention that the way that the ayah is structured, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is t telling us, especially be dutiful to your parents. 
what can we gain from that? Most of us, when we start growing up, so first of all, we're very dependent on parents, right? When you're young. But then, mashallah, we finish, uh, we go to um, secondary school, we go to college, then you start getting a job on the side. And then we start taking our parents for granted. Now we don't need our parents anymore. So we start to take our parents for granted. Whereas we don't take others for granted. It's very easy for us at that stage in our lives to be, to show smile, uh, nice words to our friends. If you go to work, your boss, mashallah, you know, very nice words for your boss, making sure you're in their good books. We are very, it becomes very easy to have good character towards people who you now need some certain benefit from. But now that you don't need your parents anymore, we start to take our parents for granted and we forget. We easily forget all of the trials and the troubles that our parents went through. So therefore, this particular age especially, is the time where you need to start reflecting those teenage years especially when you start to become strong and independent and you're looking forward to becoming an adult and you're looking forward to getting your own job your own you know salary mashallah your own independence at that time shaitan will come and he will deceive many of us and we will start to look down on our parents we may look at our parents and think Subhanallah, look at me, I'm very educated now. I know better English than them. I can do X, Y, and Z. Look at them, they can't do these things. And we might start looking down on them. This is only deception from the shaitan. Because it's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. You might think I'm only a teenager. Within you know, five, ten years, just goes like this. Within a matter of time, you will have your own children. And then again, they will become old. And maybe they will look at you the same way you looked at your parents. So it's important... Insha'Allah for us to take this particular lesson too. Lesson number three. We learn from the ayah, especially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws our attention to a time where our parents start to age. Both of them or one of them. And now we mentioned the roles start to reverse. When you were young, very vulnerable, very dependent. Many of you have younger brothers, nephews and nieces and you know the absolute dependency a young person has on their parent but then the cycle of life is that things start to get reversed now you are strong they slowly become weak they lose their mental sharpness right? they might become very stubborn in the way that they think they might be very set in, your, in their ways, in the thoughts that they have. Whereas you, mashallah, now a free thinker, very intelligent, very smart, able to understand what's going on. The roles are now reversed. And because of that reversal now, they need your help. They need your support as a young person. We live in a time where we are encouraged as young people to do what? Just to enjoy life, to enjoy life and to get your fame, get your wealth and just have lots of fun. Looking after parents is not a fun job. Looking after your parents, sitting with them is not very enjoyable for many young people. But then at that point when you feel that shaitan is giving me this deception, then remember, was it very fun for your parents to change your nappy when you were a couple of years ago? Was it very fun? Was it very enjoyable? And I'm telling you this because I'm also, I've got young children. Now I understand. I understand what my parents went through. Was it fun, enjoyable for your parent to wake up all night for a couple of days, for one week, when you had a fever and you're coughing all the time? Was that very enjoyable? Did they say, no, I'm going to go out. I'm just going to go to the shops. I'm going to go here and there. And I'm just going to go on a holiday and I'm just, you, you look after yourself. There's, there's some milk, there's the fridge, there's the cooker. You've got some eggs there. You know, cook, bismillah, do your own thing. I'm going to go on a two-week break. Did your parents ever do that? Subhanallah. This could, should, every single time you get this thought, we must repel it with, by remembering just a few years ago what our situation was. 
And this leads on to our fourth lesson, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and instructs us that we must not approach our parents by shrugging them off, dismissing them, and approaching them with harmful words. Not even uff. Speaking to them in a manner which really makes them hurt inside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade that. And this is one of the major sins for us to speak to our parents. You know, sometimes they say that, you know, um, you know certain words, once you've said it, you can never take them back. And the relationship is never the same ever again. So before you speak, just think. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these words are very heavy, although very light on our tongues. Okay? This could be something that, you know, if we don't do tawbah from it and our parents don't forgive us from it, and of course, most parents, if not all, they will be more than happy to forgive. But who knows when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take us, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take our parents from us. And the last thing you don't want, the last word to be that type of word. And we know if you're not allowed to say oof, that means you're not allowed to say anything worse than that. Just by logic, we know. You know, um, beating. Now we hear about stories, subhanAllah, in our local community. Elderly parents end up in a &E because a child has beaten them. This is not, you might think this is a rare occurrence. This is happening, this is happening in our community. This is happening and you know, for whatever reason, maybe sometimes, uh, you know, uh, our, our Sheikh uh, mentioned uh, you know, many points about parents. Maybe sometimes the parents didn't raise the child in a way that they will be dutiful to them. But nevertheless, this is taking place in our community. If we want to change, inshallah, let us change, let us change ourselves and our approach, and then we spread this understanding amongst our young people. Because like I said, it's very, today, um, these days, being respectful to parents isn't something that, it is something strange. It has become something very strange. I remember um, I was speaking to uh, a colleague of mine and um, I was going to go on a holiday and I told them that, you know, I just spoke to my parents just to ask them if it's okay for me to go on this holiday. For them, for my colleague of mine, he just could not understand why I would do that. Why would you, a grown man, a grown professional, have to go to your parents and just ask them, you know, what do you think? Do some, you know, shura with them, consult them before you go on a holiday. It's your money, you spend it the way you like. You'll see them once or twice a year, no problem. This has become something extremely strange. And subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ told us that Islam began as something strange. And when human beings corrupt, they corrupt their nature, then Islam, the message of Islam, the pure message of Islam, just basic things about looking after parents, that in itself has become something strange. So inshallah, this is, this, our society that we live in are really crying and in huge need of these types of messages. This is something that we can benefit our society with by calling them towards this Islamic call of being dutiful to parents. How many parents, elderly parents, are passing away without any family around them because they're too busy with other things? How many people are being, uh, how many parents, elderly people in our society are completely dependent on the state because their family are not interested anymore. These are values that our deen teaches us that we must go out and we must show society. This is what the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is how the deen and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies society, reforms communities, families and societies. And we should have this confidence, young brothers, that you hold the keys to answering the problems all of the social problems that we find, that people are crying about. Our deen, our Quran, our sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has the answers to all of this. Have this confidence, practice it, and then go out and tell people with confidence. So that's lesson number four. Lesson number five I wanted to um, share with you from this ayah, these couple of ayat of the Quran was, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us to, to then speak to our parents in an honorable way. What does he subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Wa qawlan karima. Speak to your parents in an honorable way. 
Now I've got some young people in front of me, so inshallah let's open it up and ask you, how can you speak? What kind of things can you do to make your parents feel, feel honoured? That you have honoured them? Number one, Jazakallah khair. Salam them. Sometimes we're too shy even to just say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh when we enter the house. Jazakallah khair, young man. Yes. Sorry? Yeah, so your mother spends all day making your best, uh, mashallah, favorite meal. Just a small thank you. Expressing that you might think it's something very small, but it will change your, whole, your mother's entire day. The happiness it gives her when you go and thank them. Jazakal khair, excellent point. Anything else you can do? Young, I've, got, I've got some young people there. Got some at the back. Bismillah, tell me. MashaAllah. So tell them that you appreciate them and you love them. And sometimes it's quite difficult to say something like that, isn't it? Maybe we're not cultured in that way. Now I can tell you, it is something very difficult to say, isn't it? Just to go up to them and say, Mom, Dad, I love you. But that will make them feel, that will make them feel so honored. Trust me, when you become a parent, yeah, and your child says this, you, you will change, you will melt your heart. Inshallah. So mashallah. These are very, very good points. Another thing, another thing I would mention is sometimes, you know, as you, um, as you grow older, you accumulate a lot of wisdom and life experience, right? Part of honoring our parents is some, before we make any decision in life, seek the advice of your parents. When you seek that advice from them, Number one, they will share with you something, a perspective that maybe you have not even considered. Because you have limited life experience. You might be very knowledgeable. You might, mashallah, know application process to the university, you know it really well. You know all the career options, all of these things you might know really well. But your parents have a certain perspective just due to the fact that they have been on this planet for longer than you have. So maybe they will benefit you with this perspective. And also they feel honored. When you seek their advice, they feel valued. They feel that you are giving importance to them. So that is a way of honoring your parents. Many of the other points that I was going to mention, you young brothers in front of you, mashallah, have already mentioned. Sometimes getting, know, getting to know your parents, just asking them about when they were young, what did they do? Now parents, you, when you reach a certain point in your life, you like talking about your past experiences. Especially grandparents, you sit down with them and ask them, they will, they will go for hours, mashallah, telling you all the different life experience. You'll benefit, but you also will honor, make them feel, makes them feel valued and important. At a time in their life when maybe they don't, they're not as important as you are, mashallah. So that's lesson number five. We should make our parents feel honored. Number six, what do we do when there's a disagreement? when you have a disagreement with your parents. Maybe your parents are telling you to do something that's wrong. Maybe your parents are being stubborn and you are in the right. How should you deal with that situation? Any, any again, any advices from our young ustads in the, in the audience? Stay calm, number one. Yes, very important. Stay calm. Anything else, yes? Don't be arrogant. So how can you be arrogant when you're having a disagreement? What kind of things will you end up doing? Yeah, so sometimes ego gets in. How, I'm right. You are wrong. We need to suppress the ego at that point. Even if you are right and your parents are wrong, there's a way. You can give advice to your parents. You can give nasiha to your parents. That's completely allowed. Islam does not tell us that every single thing your parents say and do is completely 100% right. Not necessarily. But it's the way you say it. It's the way you give advice. It's the way you'd handle the situation. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that lower to them your wing of mercy, of humility, sorry. Be humble, don't be proud and arrogant with them, even when, they, when you are right and they are wrong. At that time, just listen, 
and let the situation calm down. And then later on, when the situation is much more calm and tranquil, you come and then you give your advice to your parents. In a humble way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how to deal with these situations. And in a way full of kindness and mercy and rahmah. So that's very important for us. Especially disagreements. That's when things start to... When emotions are running high. When you want to go somewhere. When you want to do something. When you want to pursue something. And your parents, rightfully or wrongfully, may object. At that time, we have to manage it in a way where we don't earn the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather, we do it in a way that we manage the situation and we seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number, lesson number seven, he mentions in this ayat that we show them rahmah, affection and kindness. And we have already explored the idea of how the roles start to reverse as you get older. As you get older, the roles reverse. And actually your parents need your kindness. Your parents need your kindness. Even if they are not very old and frail. They may be, you know, they may be in their 40s or 50s. They may be still, alhamdulillah, be strong. But on certain things, they still need your kindness and compassion. Because they're not as young and strong as they used to be. Whereas you are now, mashaAllah. So this rahmah, you express it in your kindness and affection at a time when they actually need it. The other way we can look at this, that another, the other way that we should also appreciate the rahmah that we need to give to our parents is because when we make the dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us. What's the dua Allah teaches us? Does any young man know this dua by heart? The dua for parents, anyone? رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا O Allah, O my Lord, have mercy on them. Have kindness and you know, uh, uh, affection on them as they did to me when I was young. And we know from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam الرَّاحِمُونَ يَرْحَمْهُمُ الرَّحْمَانِ That the one who has mercy, who shows kindness, who shows affection to others Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show kindness and affection to you. The next lesson is that we should make dua for our parents. How many, when was the last time you made dua for your parent? For both of them. When was the last time we did that? We should be able to remember. If you can't, then this is a reminder for you. And what happens when you make dua? Do you know what happens? There's an angel that's, join, that's joining you, we know from the hadith. What is, that angel, what is that angel saying? Does anyone know? Yes, I mean to you and for you too. The angel is then making that dua. So you make dua for your parents. What happens? You get this dua for you as well. Of course, we don't do it for selfish reasons. But Alhamdulillah, Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He will give without limit. You make dua for someone else, Allah gives that to you too. Subhanallah. So don't be stingy with your duas. As Muslims, we like lots of free things, don't we? There's so many sales going on now. You see people going to the shops, lining up for all the free items. Buy one, get one free. Buy two, get another one free. This is one of the buy one, get one free deals that are available to us all the time. Make dua, comes back to you again. So don't be stingy with your dua for your parents. We know from the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that under the feet of your mother is what? Jannah. So if you want this Jannah, when you, when, you, when you look at your mother, you should understand that this is where my Jannah is. Sometimes we seek Jannah in so many different places, but we don't realize that Jannah is there at home. We can seek our Jannah through our, um, through our service uh, to our parents. And inshallah, last, last lesson that I'm going to um, conclude with, I don't want to make this uh, talk too long. Because when I was young, and I used to, when I used to sit in long talks, then I used to get very bored. And I used to go in here and come out the other. So I understand. So I'm going to, uh, inshallah, last, last uh, point I wanted to mention 
was that don't set yourself up in your relationship with your parents in a way that causes you to regret later on in life. <coughs> what do I mean by that? There's two ways to understand this. Number one, when you um, get a bit older, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with your own family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with your own children. If you behave in your parent, with your parents, in a way which isn't pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know, guaranteed, your child is watching and your child is learning. And you are setting your children up with an example such that when they get older and you need them, they will only follow the sunnah that you established from the, for, for them when they were young. And that will cause you a lot of regret. Okay? Now I know as a young person, it's hard to imagine. Ten years later, I'm going to be a father. I'm going to have my own children. But guarantee you, time goes just like this. And before you know it, you are going to be in the same situation your parents were. And at that time, you need to set an example as tarbiya for your own children, especially when you realize the struggles that your parents went through. And secondly, speak to someone who's lost their parents and how much now they value their parents. For those of us who have our parents with us, we don't understand the value that we have, the ni'mah that we have. There are many. Even speak to your parents. Maybe they've, uh, many of our parents, many, one or two of our grandparents have passed away. Speak to them and ask them, how much do they value the time that they had? Could they, what, how much do they wish they had just one more minute with their parents so they can ask them for their du'as, for the, so that they can ask them for forgiveness for all the wrong they did to them? Subhanallah. Let us not set ourselves up such that when we when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's judgment comes and his order comes and Allah takes our parents away from us, then we live a life full of regret. Don't be in that situation. Turn things around. There's time for those of us who, are, who have fallen out with our parents, for those of us who've had you know, arguments with our parents. Any disagreement, whilst we have time, you can turn it around. Be the first person to go up to your parents and say, even if you were in the right, to just say, let's forget about this. Sorry for the way that I spoke to you. I want to, inshallah, you know, be a good son, be a good daughter to you again. Do that. That will save you a lot of regret in this life and also in the hereafter. So in summary, we shared 10 lessons. Lesson number one was Allah mentioned the worship of Allah. And then he mentioned the command to be dutiful to your parents, showing the importance. Number two, that sometimes we end up taking our parents for granted, especially when we have become young, strong and independent. And we show a lot of good character to everyone except our parents. We show good character to our friends. We share, we share good words to our bosses, our colleagues, even to the person on the street who opens the door for you, we show a smile. But we don't have this for our parents. We need to change that. The third lesson we shared was that the cycle of life is such that the roles become reserve, reversed. When you were young, you needed your parents. But as you grow older, you don't need them anymore, but they start needing you. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes um, the age and the vulnerability that is associated, that comes with that. We should avoid, lesson number four was we should avoid shrugging our parents off, turning them away and, and speaking to them with language which causes, which causes hurt. When you were young, your parents spoke to you in the best of words and they treated you in the best of ways. And now, mashallah, you are strong. And, uh, uh, and independent now because of that. And number five, we mentioned some ways in which we can make our parents feel honored, seeking their advice, getting to know them, expressing your gratitude to them. Number six, we spoke about ways in which we can handle disagreements with our parents. Sometimes they may be telling us to do things that are not right. 
we don't have to listen. We should not listen when they tell us to do disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even in that circumstance, there's a way to manage it. You don't have to come out arrogant and loud and, bra- uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and very brace in the way that you speak with your parents. Number, number seven, we spoke about showing rahma, affection and kindness um, to your parents. And we spoke about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows rahma to those people who show rahma to others. Number eight, we spoke about the, the, making dua for your parents. Number nine, we spoke about the status of the mother and how under her feet, as mentioned in the hadith, is Jannah. So seek your Jannah over there. And number 10, don't, don't behave in a way such that it causes you to regret later on in life. Either through your children now, treating you in the same way that you tr- treated your parents, or that you actually regret because now your parents have been taken away from you and you, have no, you don't have a chance now to mend that relationship anymore. So act now whilst you've got the time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us um, fruitful rela- relationships with our parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those people who achieve Jannah and the pleasure of Allah through uh, serving our parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins and to bless this gathering. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant ourselves and all of our parents Jannatul Firdaus wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimina fa astaghfiruhu innahu al-rahim Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh